point really is. And I'll try and explain to you. It seems to me that it seems to me there's a very common presupposition, occasionally voiced but often unvoiced, and it is this: that on 9/11, everybody, especially those on the scene, knew that the towers came down because they were hit by airplanes, and the airplanes obviously damaged them, and the fires subsequently damaged them, and through some kind of structural failure, which usually people don't want to get into in detail, they came down, and it was obvious. And that was the story, and that was the perception, and that was the belief. And that people who suggest controlled demolition brought them down are latecomers. They're revisionists. They're people who came along later with their cockeyed theory. And they perhaps have some special conspirat conspiratorial way of thinking, which leads them to unnecessarily complicate a simple situation. And I think this is a very powerful presupposition. I get this almost every time I give an interview to the media. And it's false. It's a falsification of history. The idea that these buildings came down because of explosions, and even, more specifically, because of explosives planted in the building, was an idea found all over the place on 9-11. On the scene by eyewitnesses, even on television, on the radio, in the paper. Very common. And it's important that we know that. It changes our perspective on this. So, uh, I'm going to make this point as quickly as I can uh, by giving you five examples of people on 9-11 who made this judgment. We begin with the... Uh, oh, I just put in a couple of slides to show you uh, the kinds of images we're, we're used to, which people saw on 9-11. Some of them saw it up close, some of them saw it on TV, and some of them made the not unnatural conclusion that an explosive event was taking place. So here's my first video. The gentleman here, the reporter here is N.J. Burkett, and he's working for ABC News 7 and he's standing very near the towers. Okay, sound, let's stop, sound technician. Okay, so we're just going to take a break until we get it turned out here. Because. You mean, is it all the way? I mean, it's somewhat that. Maybe the sound of the machine. Is that the input on that? Do they have it in there? I got the big one. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. You got it. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Alright, they want to do one. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the two towers. The debris continues to fall and to rain on the people below. There are people hanging from the windows, 90 stories up, and a number of bodies have actually hit the table. Me too. Me too, me too. One. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents. So this man uh, had to pick up, he and his uh, companion had to pick up the camera and run for their lives. And uh, I don't see any evidence that Mr. Burkett had a particular conspiratorial frame of mind. And he didn't, certainly didn't come around after the event. This is his spontaneous judgment, standing in a place of great danger. He says, before the material even hits the ground, a huge explosion now raining debris on all of us, we'd better get out of the way, and he runs. And just so you know, he also had to run for his life when the North Tower came down a little bit later, and he described that as a blast. That's example number one. My uh, next example is textual. Uh, I got this from looking at the same day coverage by CNN. That's about 11 and a half hours, I think. I was surprised to find that uh, Mayor Giuliani uh, is asked at least twice on air on CNN on the day 
about explosions in the buildings. The second occasion takes place at roughly 2.39 p.m. in the afternoon at a press conference where a female reporter, who is off screen, so I don't know her identity, asks him the following question. Do you know anything about the cause of the explosions that brought the two buildings down? Was it caused by the planes or by something else? You notice that she doesn't ask if there were explosions, she assumes it. She doesn't ask if they brought the buildings down, she assumes that as well. She just wants to know what caused them. Was it the planes or something else? Third example is uh, one of several pieces of video footage that has been got from the National Institute of Standards and Technology through a Freedom of Information Act request. It's called the Matthew Shapoff video, and I'm showing you a tiny fragment of it. So here we have some people who are off screen in, I assume, their apartment or condo in New York City, watching and filming, in this case, the North Tower in the distance, and we can hear them talking in the background. And it's particularly the man uh, who talks here that I want you to listen to. I assume it's Ma Matthew Shapoff. Again, this gentleman didn't come along after the scene. He made his judgment as the North Tower came down, and he made it just as the debris was beginning to hit the ground. That was a bomb that did that, he said. Now, by the way, I just want to remind you what I'm trying to prove here. I'm not using Shapoff's evidence to argue that controlled demolition took place. I'm not even at that stage of the talk yet. I'm simply making a historic point, point about history, that there were people on that day who made the spontaneous judgment that these buildings exploded. My next example is from fire department, uh, sorry, firefighter Christopher Fenio, and this is taken from the FDNY Oral Histories. And he's talking about a period after the South Tower came down, that was the first tower to come down, and before the North Tower came down. So sometime roughly between 10 and 10.30 in the morning, it turns out there was a debate happening among firefighters on the, at the scene. Quote, at that point a debate began to rage because the perception was that the building looked like it had been taken out with charges. In other words, not merely that it came down because of explosions in some general sense, but that the building had been rigged for demolition. They were debating that before 10.30 in the morning on 9-11. And that's the debate that is still raging 10 years later. The debate between some kind of structural collapse hypothesis and the explosion hypothesis. And my fifth and final example is one that Richard gave yesterday, so I'll be brief. Pent bomb, as Barbara Honiger pointed out, is the FBI uh, acronym for their investigation of 9-11, and it stands for Pentagon Twin Towers Bombing Investigation. When I first heard that years ago, I thought, what a strange title. Because the official narrative has no room for bombs at any of the locations. Is it possible that some members of the FBI actually thought that it was a bombing originally? And that's when we go to Jack Kelly's very interesting statement. 